Hi, it's Miles here at Fabricana. We've got an exciting video for you today. It's a little bit more ambitious uh, for all the videos that we've done previously. It's a beautiful jacket for fall, winter. It's an unlined jacket, so it's pretty manageable. We did ours in about two and a half hours. So maybe you've got one evening to do all the cutting and seam finishes, and the next evening you're going to do all the sewing. So it really is something that's kind of manageable. Hopefully you can fit into your schedule. Um, it's a beautiful kind of, uh, almost like a bathrobe coat, a really easy layer with the, the belt, I think makes it uh, a really pretty silhouette, almost like a kimono style sleeve. Uh, we've done ours in a beautiful kind of uh, wool and polyester blend. So it's a really um, inexpensive and but really fashion forward piece. Um, I love our plaid, but maybe you can do it in a fun fashion color. I always say it's great to have the basics in your wardrobe, like maybe you have a black overcoat or charcoal or a navy or a camel, but isn't it fun to have additional pieces in your wardrobe that just um, are a little bit more fashion forward and a little bit fun. So hopefully you'll have an opportunity to make something fun for your wardrobe. Let's get started. Hi guys, just want to give a heads up that for today's video, it's a little bit longer than usual. So we've broken it up into three parts, but to make it easy to navigate, we've put all of the timestamps in the description so you can find exactly what you're looking for uh, at a glance. So we hope you enjoy today's video and that you find it helpful. So for our project today, we're gonna to use this beautiful wrap coat pattern from Vogue. Uh, it's an easy Vogue. Uh, it's Vogue 9334. We're doing it in a size large. As much as possible, I'm going to try to stick to the written instructions. If I vary from this, I will let you know. But I think if you're working along with the pattern, that'll make it a little bit easier. You can look at, look at the photos in the instructions. So I've pre-cut out all my pattern pieces. And I want to show you what I've done to this point. Um, because I have finished some of the seams, I have applied the interfacing. So let's just go through the pieces that we're using. So here I've cut out the belt. There's no preparation required for that. So that's ready to go. Uh, this is the back neck facing. I have added the interfacing, but I haven't done any seam finishing. These are the front facing pieces. This will be the inside of our jacket. It's an unlined jacket, so we need a nice wide facing. I've applied the interfacing, but again, no seam finishes yet. Then we have our pockets. Now this is different from the pattern. I've added on the facing of the pocket um, a fusing. I just think that'll give the pocket a little bit more body. It's not called for in the pattern, but I think um, if you have a nice soft fabric like I do, you'll really be happy to have the interfacing there. And I've also finished the seam. I don't have my serger with me today, so I've just used the overlock on my sewing machine. Looks really nice, looks like a serge. Then I have my sleeves cut out. And not a lot of prep here, but I have finished the long underarm seams with the overlock stitch. Then this nice big piece is the front of the jacket. Um, no interfacing required. Um, I have marked with pins the placement for the pocket, so that's I'll know where my pockets are going to go. I have marked here close to the neck, there is a kind of a dart, so I've marked that with chalk, my stitching line, and I have finished some of the seams, um, just the long side seam and the shoulder seam, so I've done that for both pieces. And then finally, we have the back piece. There's no darts, uh, no interfacing, but I have um, in one go, uh, this is actually the armhole opening and then the side seam. I finished that all in one on both sides and I've also finished this, um, the seam allowance across the shoulder. So that's where I'm at. Um, we're actually gonna time this video today. We don't usually do that, but I really wanna show you that this can be done um, fairly quickly, maybe in one or two evenings. So if you have done all the prep that I've done, all the cutting, um, seam finishes, and interfacing, you can uh, follow along with me and we'll see how long this takes. I'm guessing it's gonna be about two to two and a half hours, maybe a little bit longer. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoy and we'll get started. So I wanna take a moment to uh, say how crazy I am having chosen a plaid to make this coat. Um, plaids do require a bit of matching, so it's a little bit extra work. Um, so what I did was I've lined up 
there's an indication on the pattern of the center front of the jacket, and I believe that's here. So I lined up that center front right between the middle of the plaid. Um, the other thing that I needed to look at was how the um, stripes will line up at the hem. So obviously, I, well maybe not obviously, but I cut one of the fronts single layer, and then I took that piece and I folded it onto um, more of the fabric and lined up all of my stripes and then cut the second one, um, basically a mirror image to that. So I hope that makes sense. And then on the side seam, obviously I want all of the stripes to line up front to back. So when I cut up my back piece, I made sure that I had my pattern lined up so that the hems would line up the stripes going across. The other thing to think about, the facings, there's a little back neck facing. I cut that centered the same as I did the center back. I did line up the pockets. So once I knew my pocket placement, then I knew where to place the pockets on the fabric. And finally, the obviously the belt I cut nicely on the pattern. And yeah, that's about it. So um, working with plaid is definitely trickier. It just takes a little bit more time with the um, cutting. But if you're ambitious like I am, uh, give it a try. So following along the instructions in the pattern, the first step that they do is they baste at 3 8 of an inch on both of the curves on the pocket. So we're gonna head to the sewing machine and we'll baste the curves. So once we've basted those little curves um, on the front side of our pocket, our fabric has a really nice nap so we know that the front and the back. Um, we're gonna flip it over and I'm actually gonna pull on the bobbin thread. So that's on the back of our fabric. I'm gonna pull that up like a gather, and you can see that's gonna to start to force the seam to the back of the fabric. It's always a little bit tricky to press a curve, so this is just a really helpful uh, tip in the pattern, and uh, I really find it quite helpful. So once you've got a bit of a gather, you can lay down your pocket, and we end up pressing back 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, but that basting really helps us get a nice curve. So we're going to be doing this obviously with both pockets, two corners each, and then we can move on to the pocket facing. So once we have our, our corners beautifully pressed, we are ready to stitch the facing. So as I indicated, we've interfaced the facing to give it a bit more um, stability. Uh, it's not included in the pattern, but I thought it was a good idea. On the pattern, there is a little notch that indicates the width of the facing. So I've got that little notch there. I'm gonna fold back my facing, and then I'm going to start sewing from that fold. I've gone back to a two and a half stitch length because I'm not basting anymore. And then I'm just going to stitch a curve kind of right off the edge, then I don't need to back stitch. I'm going to do the same for both pockets on both sides, and then I will show you how to trim and turn the facing. So we have stitched the top of the facing here. Um, now we need to trim the corner. I'm going to do one uh, close to your stitching, but not too close. And then to grade the seam allowance, I'm actually going to trim just through the facing layer and the interfacing. So I'm leaving the kind of the pocket free. And then we're going to turn our pocket around. So before we do that, I will trim the other corner, kind of see what that looks like. So we're going to flip that around, right side out, starting to look more like a pocket along that crease, the top of the pocket, I'm going to press. So that now gives us a guide to continue pressing down the side of the pocket. So this is 5 eighths of an inch that we're pressing back to the inside of the pocket. We're gonna do that on the bottom of the pocket. Careful not to unpress your curves. Those are my beautiful corners. So again, starting to look like a beautiful pocket. We're gonna go back to the sewing machine and stitch the facing down. I'll see you there. So we've uh, stitched our facing, turned it around and pressed, 
Now we want to stitch down this spacing so it's not loosey-goosey. So from the face of our pocket, I'm going to kind of look and see what I can use as a guide because I don't want to stitch uh, too close to the finished edge, but I do want to catch the facing in there. So on my sewing machine, actually the edge of the metal plate is a great guide for that. Gonna trim close to the stitching. There we are, our pockets are ready to go. So now that we have our beautiful pockets ready to go on and we have the pocket placement marked with pins, I'm going to place each of the pockets on the left and right front pieces. I'm going to pin them in place, quite a few pins, uh, in the corners especially. Now I'm lucky that I have this plaid to actually use as a guide. Um, well, I'm lucky and it has to be exact because if it's not exact, people are going to be like, your pockets are not in the right place. I'm actually applying them at the dark brown line because that'll be a really good guide for me knowing that I'm on the right track. So once I've got the other pocket pinned in place, I will meet you at the sewing machine. All right, we're ready to stitch the pocket on. We're using a straight stitch at a two and a half stitch length. I'm veering away from the pattern instructions. They just kind of start at the top and edge stitch all the way around. I wanna make sure to reinforce the corner of your pocket. I, I don't know if you're like me, you might be hard on your pockets and you don't want to tear the front of your jacket. So right at the, um, stitching line where we stitch the facing down, I'm going to put my needle in my work and then I'm going to kind of go on a bit of a diagonal about a quarter inch away from that corner. I think it's a nice uh, decorative uh, thing and it'll definitely make your pocket more secure. So I've stopped stitching about one stitch away from the folded edge. I'm leaving my needle in my work. I'm pivoting counterclockwise. I'm going to do about two or three stitches, just two. I'm gonna leave my needle in again. Get my pins out of the way here. Pivot the work. And now I'm, now I'm ready to edge stitch. And that extra bit of stitching that I'm gonna do is gonna give a lot more strength to the pocket. So I'm doing an edge stitch. That's about an eighth of an inch away from the folded edge of the pocket. And I'm trying to make sure that all of my matching points are lined up as I go. I wanna be really careful going around the curve. I'm gonna wheel a couple of the stitches to make sure I'm maintaining that nice eighth of an inch away from the folded edge. It's looking good. Okay, I'm gonna stitch right up to the top of the pocket, about a stitch away from the fold. Now we're gonna do the same reinforcement. So I've got my needle in my work. I'm pivoting counterclockwise. I'm gonna do two stitches like I did at the other side. Now I need to do a beeline straight to that seam that's keeping the, the facing in place. I'm gonna leave a nice long tail because this time I am actually going to pull the thread through. So where I just finished stitching, I give a little tug to pull the bobbin thread through. I'm gonna tie that off. I'm gonna go do that again for the where I started sewing and then I can work on the next pocket. All right, so we've stitched our pockets in place. You can probably barely see it on camera because it's so well camouflaged. Uh, we are about 25 minutes into the sewing, uh, if you're following along time-wise. Uh, and even with that 25 minutes, we actually had a snag uh, with the pockets where our tension was off, so we had to restitch it. Um, so anyway, we need to move along, make up some time. We are ready to sew the back collar. Yes, this is actually the collar piece that's attached to the front. It's a very cool design. So we're gonna put our two front pieces facing each other. We're gonna stitch across the top of that collar. That's the center back collar. We're also, while we're at the machine, we're gonna take our back piece and we are going to stay stitch along the back um, neck edge. So stay stitching is, um, a straight stitch about 3 8 of an inch away from the edge and that keeps the, the neck edge from stretching out as we're sewing the collar on. So we're going to go to the sewing machine and do those two things. All right, so we have our collar pieces lined up. Look how nicely that plaid matches. Good job cutting. So we're going to sew with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. 
with our normal sewing stitch length, two and a half. Now we don't need to finish this edge because this is all gonna be kind of um, inside the collar. The facing will cover it. So we don't need to worry about doing any seam finishes there. So we're sewn that, we're gonna press that open while we're at the sewing machine, as I mentioned, from the face of the back piece, we are going to stay stitch the neck edge. And stay stitching, as I mentioned, we're gonna do a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So 3 eighths from the edge. And you don't wanna stretch as you sew, you wanna let the machine really feed the fabric through because that's the whole thing we're trying to avoid is this curve stretching out of shape. So we're gonna head to the iron and press the collar seam open, and then I will show you how to apply the collar. All right, so we have our center back collar stitched. It's kind of an odd looking thing right now. Um, before we can actually stitch the collar on, we need to uh, attach the shoulder seams from the front to the back. So I'm gonna lay those uh, face facing each other the front and the back now you'll notice that the back is always a little bit longer than the front shoulder seam so we need to kind of let the machine kind of ease the back into the front so I'm going to apply a few pins to the shoulder making sure that I've got the uh, stops and starts lined up like I said we'll be easing in kind of the middle of it and that'll allow it basically gives a little bit of room for your shoulder blade on the back. And once we've got these pins in, I will meet you at the sewing machine. All right, so starting from one end of the shoulder seam, we're gonna do a few stitches. And like I said, you need to let the back kind of ease into the front. So I'm stitching from the front, which is the narrower um, length and then you can almost see like the back's quite a bit more uh, length there. There is a notch, so I'm going to use that notch as a guide, but I basically have to let the machine do the work to kind of, like the feed dogs um, will kind of gather, not really gather, but just kind of ease in the back shoulder. Now when you're sewing seams that don't kind of um, line up, you don't need it to line up at the cut edge, you need it to line up where you're stitching. So keep that in mind with all of your sewing, because um, when you press it open, you don't want to have a gap. So don't need to worry about lining up the ends of the cut edge. But you do want to make sure where your stitching lines up. So we're going to do the second shoulder and then we will press and see what we need to do to move on. So we have pressed our shoulder seams open. Um, it's a little bit of a curve, so take care when you're pressing it. Um, so we, I should mention, are about 40 minutes into our project. We have our pockets sewn, we have our back and front sewn together at the shoulders, and we're ready to stitch the collar. Now, if you're following along in the instructions in the pattern, I told you I would let you know if I was veering from the instructions. Um, at this point in the pattern, they're asking you to sew the side seam, but because the armhole is so straight, sewing the side seam now will make it really hard to sew your sleeve in. So we're gonna do that later. We're changing the instructions. We're gonna sew the sleeve in differently. But now, um, we are gonna go back to the pattern and we are going to sew this kind of, there's a hole here between the collar and the back, and that is gonna get stitched. I have marked with a chalk line, the marking of the sewing line um, for the collar. And we basically, I've also marked a notch at the center point of the back uh, neckline. So I'm going to get a pin and I'll pin that to the center of the collar. I'm gonna apply a few more pins along that raw edge. And then I'll meet you at the sewing machine to sew this collar in place.